We have this courtesy of BBC News. Chris North, two women accused Sex and City star of sexual assault. What an absolute whirlwind <clears throat> it's been for this guy, right? This is Mr. Big in Sex and the City. Again, I don't watch the show, but I've just seen on social media, everyone that I follow, especially all the gays and all the girls, have been going crazy over this Sex and the City reboot or sequel, whatever it's been called now. I don't even think it's called Sex and the City. I forgot what it's called, whatever, right? Basically, again, spoiler alert, but in one of the first episodes... Um, Mr. Big, who's the love interest of Sarah Jessica Parker in the series, dies, isn't it, right? He has a heart attack whilst he's pedaling on a fucking Peloton. Um, weirdly, or funny enough, Peloton managed to basically figure, find out that was happening behind the scenes and they put together a whole marketing ad thing that tied in with the whole Peloton thing that basically was able to kind of maybe correct the narrative that Peloton would drive you to a point where you might get a stroke because obviously that's going to be harmful to their brand. So that's kind of a cool little piece of content to see. And then literally the next day, so I guess the, the show airs, you see Mr. Big Die. The next day Peloton puts out a little bit of a funny tongue-in-cheek sort of ad kind of poking fun at him dying on the peloton and kind of correcting that narrative and then the third day my man gets accused of flipping sexual assault so people are thinking maybe the reason why he was killed off on sex and city in the first place was because this was coming because it makes sense because a lot of these people are in cahoots right even the lawyer i think we've seen it already with them um, the harvey weinstein things right there was there were people who were basically defending uh victims of harvey weinstein who are also informing harvey weinstein of the things that the victims are saying so there's really no you know there's no friends there's no loyalty there's no morals and no ethics when it comes to hollywood stuff so it wouldn't surprise me if they, if they did kind of give them a heads up but how mad of a week has it been for this guy right to go from being like the talk of the town on social media everyone kind of having sympathy for your character saying how great you were and then now suddenly and then again having this kind of another bump with the peloton ad and now suddenly being hit with sexual assault allegations it's just like god damn it um since the following two women have accused Sex and City star Chris Knopf of um, sexual assaulting them in 20, 2004 and 2015, the two women gave detailed accounts of the alleged assaults to the Hollywood Reporter, published using the pseudonyms Zoe and Lily. The magazine says the women do not know each other. In a statement, Mr. Knopf, 67 years old, bruv, how am I? I don't know, man. I don't, again, maybe I'm not in that position because I think someone, Bill Burr, made a really good comment about that, right? About how. Um, all the women or the men freaking out about Tiger Woods' infidelity back in the day, um, they need to spare a thought for him or be a bit more sympathetic because who, how else would you react if you happen to be the only golf player in the world that had like, you know, a baying crowd of Swedish supermodels kind of screaming your name every time you went to swing the flipping golf club, do you know what I mean? It must be really trippy to kind of get to grips with and I don't think any man could handle that much power, do you know what I mean? It's a bit hard. But um, surely at 67, being in Hollywood and having to you know enjoy all the fruits of that celebrity or that fame gives you surely there has to come a point where you just stop being a pest you just stop being that horny you just put your boner down and just chill and have a cup of tea it has to come a point there has to guys who are this level just i don't get it man like i get it man girls can be hot girls can be sexy girls can be appealing um they can make you do things that you probably wouldn't do with the same mind but 67 in your 60s 50s like you gotta chill you gotta relax man or if you've got that kind of money, just hire somebody that can fulfill your needs at a moment's notice. But I guess that's no thrill in that, isn't it? Because you're paying them. I don't know. It's just bizarre. In a statement, Mr. Noff said um, the encounters were consensual and that the accusations of assault are category false. <laughs> my, my, my man was hitting 22 year olds when he was in his 50s. Yo, this man's a mad, mad man. He said, um, Zoe now 40 says she was 22 um, when the actor allegedly raped her at an apartment in West Hollywood. Oh my God, it's rape. Oh Jesus. Lily now 31 says that he, she was raped at Green, in Greenwich's Village apartment in 2015 when she was 25 and he was 60. The details of the article by journalist Kim Masters also interviews people such as Zoe's boss at the time, a rape treatment center and a friend of Lily's who accounts all seem to back up the women's claims. So they obviously reported the incidents. They spoke to people outside of their friendship groups. So they were able to corroborate and have like a timeline of did this thing happen when it happened which is obviously the only thing that you can kind of come off because you can kind of base these stories off of because you know so much time has elapsed to get any sort of dna all that sort of stuff and the article also quotes text messages purportedly between mr Noff and lily at the time of the alleged assault chris Noff is known for his acting roles in law and order and sex in the city which he's played the lead character mr big a follow-on from the hugely popular series entitled and just like that has recently been released okay that's the name of it the bbc also contacted him for comment 
A statement from the actor to Hollywood Reporter and Rolling Stone said the following, the accusations against me made by these individuals that I met years, even decades ago, are categorically false. These stories could have been from 30 years or 30 days ago. No always means no. And that is a line I did not cross. The encounters were consensual. It's difficult not to question the timing of these stories coming out. I don't know for certain why they're surfacing now, but I do know this. I don't assault these. I did not assault these women. So categorically, he's doing a lot more than more people do. As I said before, I said, if it was ever me and I was accused of something like this, I could, I would come out on the offensive. I would categorically say I didn't do it. And I'd obviously want to prove without a shadow of a doubt that I didn't. Similar to what Justin Bieber did. Remember that girl tried to accuse Justin Bieber of something and he had a whole flipping text messages and geolocations of this. And he just kind of, he, sn he snuffed that story in a flipping a couple of days. That's what you have to do. And you have to obviously hope to get a retraction from whatever pe paper published the first reports or maybe get a correction, whatever you want. But this whole going silent, just letting it kind of, lay it's not a right thing especially if you generally think you didn't do it no one wants a flipping rape hanging over their head and people just hoping that you didn't do it and maybe assuming they didn't do it but there's no categorical proof and you didn't actually get it in right and in black and white so i can understand that but i don't know man when when you get accounts of the victims who say hey this happened to me i contacted the rape counselor i contacted my friend at the time like if they said at the time then obviously the, the thing you have to kind of try and disprove because i guess yeah, the thing you have to disprove, because it's hard to say if it happened or not because we weren't there. But if if at the time that I'm saying it happened, I told somebody close to me, I went to a place to kind of get consultation as to how I can proceed to the next step. Then I decided not to go to police because for my own reasons. It's quite hard to then say what I said at the time didn't happen because what what he then accusing these women of is both of them who didn't know each other having ideas and plans to always come out 20 30 years later and kind of accuse him which is unlikely and um and maybe i'm in a minority too i don't see anything wrong with a victim deciding to come out when they feel more comfortable and that also happens to rely with when maybe you're in the press or in the media a lot more i think that's what happened to chris D'Elia, right chris that's what happened to chris D'Elia. i think chris D'Elia was on you and he was on getting loads of promotion because he was meant to be on that um zombie film as well and he was everywhere right loads of media loads of press so the girls that were watching him on tv or seeing him on all their netflix and shit were starting to get annoyed like oh there's that guy again that assaulted me and then they started tweeting stuff and then suddenly the, the story gets picked up and then boom you know you get cancelled i don't think there's anything wrong with that do you know what i mean if you did what they said you did and you happen to be in front of their face all the time what do you expect them to do? Do you know what I mean? Like, keep quiet. Like, maybe this is the most opportune moment, especially nowadays in society where people are more willing and ready to maybe listen to stories of victims. But again, on the other side too, I'm also thinking, like, if it's not true, what do you do? How do you go about correcting it? Because if you keep fighting it, you're going to keep bringing the story to the surface. Maybe there's going to be more research and um journalistic work done in terms of digging into the story and finding out if it's true and if there is more evidence that paints you out in a bad light you then basically make a rod for your own back but if it isn't true just letting the story go and kind of get legs on its own is definitely going to lead to some catast catastrophic kind of consequences and this guy at 67 years old all he's known is to be an actor all he's known is to be some sort of entertainer what else can he do? How else can he pivot? If he is cancelled in terms of Hollywood and all that stuff, like he needs to still pay more. He needs to look after his family, da -da -da, be a breadwinner. All this sort of stuff is not is going to be drastically affected by it. So it's a difficult place to be in. It continues here. It says, according to Hollywood reporter Lily, now a journalist, contacted the publication in August, and Zoe, who works in the entertainment industry, made contact in October. So quite some time apart. Um, quite some time, but you know what I mean. As a buzz about the release of Just Like That was gaining momentum, seeing as he was reprising his role in Sex and City, set off something in me. Said Zoe, quoted saying, "To try and go public with who he is." Yeah, but yeah, it sounds opportunistic. It really does. But again, does it matter if it did happen? That's a question you got to ask yourself. The article says Zoe was living in Los Angeles in 2004 and employed by a company that worked with Mr. Knopf and other celebrities. Following what she described as flirtations, Zoe says she accepted an invitation to visit him at his West Hollywood apartment where he allegedly raped her. Afterwards, a friend insisted that she go to the hospital where she needed stitches because of the assault. Oh my God. Police came to speak to her, but she said she refused to reveal who had assaulted her. Zoe did, however, tell her boss at the time that the reporter says um, it spoke to them and they back up Zoe 
its claims in 2006. Of course they do. They're not, they're not going to say no, are they? Because that's going to make you look like a fucking weirdo too. Um, Zoe did, however, tell her boss at the time, duh, 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 in 20, 2006, Zoe says she sought counselling at the UCLA Rape Crisis Centre. God damn it. Mr. Nuff, after she started um, having nightmares and flashbacks without addressing her case specifically, a clinical director at the centre confirmed only reported that Zoe was treated there. <laughs> The article goes on to say that Lily met Mr. Knopf, on whom she was an enormous fan while working as a waitress in the VIP section of New York in nightclub in 2015. People that take advantage of their fans, they just deserve nothing but hell on earth, isn't it, really? Again, not sure if it's true or not, but people that legitimately take advantage of their fans, it's just like, that's the most sickening part of it. Like, not more sickening than having a weird interaction, than having a bad interaction with a stranger, but somebody actually adores you who's actually kind of through their views through their likes through their follows through their donations through their buying of your merch or tickets whatever they've done as a fan is basically contributed to you living this amazing lifestyle that you live then for you to go to the point where you are violating them in this way it's just i don't know there's no words for it really do you know what I mean that's sadistic as hell that is sadistic as hell um he said there quote he was hitting on me uh, for sure i was flattered i knew he was married which is shameful of me to admit the, the two went out for drinks, she said, before going back to his apartment where he tried to make out with her before allegedly pulling down his pants and raping her. God damn, according to Hollywood Reporter, his correspondence viewed a number of text messages purportedly between the actor and Lily in March 2015. Who's got text messages for that? If you've got text messages from 2015, yo. In one, he says, by the way, I have to ask you, did you enjoy our night last night? Last week, I thought it was a lot of fun, but I wasn't quite sure how you felt. Lily replied, hmm, I certainly enjoyed your company. Great conversation. Not to go in specifics of a text, but I did feel slightly used. Chris Knopf has been married to actress Tara Wilson since 2012. The two have two children together. Well, for sure, that's going to end, right? Unless she's like a big person, Hollywood herself. She's definitely going to end up leaving him, I think, off the back of this, because those are some detailed accusations. There's text messages, there's witnesses and shit. You don't really think she's going to be hanging around anytime soon, you reckon? Oh, a black lady as well. God damn. Is that a black lady? What do you say? Black lady? Or is she um, Chris Teigen level black? Who knows? But yeah. Mass situation to being as per usual. 